Welcome to the texture painting tutorial in Quixel, Quixel Mixer. And so today we are going to be texture painting one of the uh, a stair asset that I made earlier in Blender. And I have linked the stair asset, asset itself with their respective maps uh, and what those maps are. I will come to it uh, in a bit. So the link, uh, the download link will be in the Discord uh, in the announcement that that's posted. And yeah, so when you open uh, Mixer for, for the first time, you'll see a screen similar to this, or it might prompt you to log in to an account, a uh, Quixel account or Google, or you can use whatever you want. Uh, I would say try to log in with your Epic account, because if you do so, you get access to all the uh, the pre-made textures uh, and assets uh, for free. You don't have to buy them. So what what... Uh, we're going to do is create a new project. I already have created a new one called UWGDC tutorial. You can name it whatever you want. And then go here. Uh, when when you click on this, go here, click on new mix. And I'm going to call it um, UWGDC tutorial. And then my working resolution will be 4K because that's what the model was based for. And all the maps are in. They are also in 4K. So let's do click OK. And this is the screen that you'll be uh, greeted with. Uh, it, you get this checkered plane. This is the default plane. And you get uh, your most of the working space on the right side of the window. You get layers, setup, display, performance, export. And on the right side, on the left side, sorry, you get viewport, local library, online. That's just where the assets are. You can get a bunch of assets from here and experiment it however you want. And on the viewport, so to move around in the viewport, you can zoom in with your scroll wheel. And if you hold the middle click, you can move around like this. And to rotate the camera, you hold Alt and left click and drag around and it moves the, the camera, right? So the thing is that we want to work with on the stairs, right? So just go to setup and model settings, uh, change the type to a custom model and navigate to wherever you put your uh, stairs FBX file. And I'm just gonna click okay, open that and we get our stairs in, in here. Now they don't have any texture for now, but we are gonna texture this and make it look stylized something similar to how it looks in uh, games like Genshin or uh, Legend of Zelda, although not to that level, but kind of similar to that, right? Uh, kind of going for that similar art style. And so before we start working on everything, we want to change, uh, we want to give uh, Tell Mixer what our normal maps, ambient occlusion and uh, curvatures, and also give it a material ID. So what everything is, so let me, so to, to do that, you want to stay in setup, and under texture settings, click edit texture sets. Here you can add all the maps ever that you want, that you will need. Uh, so what are normals? So normal maps are, they tell you uh, where the bumps are in the texture, how the light is supposed to bounce off of it. Uh, that's what the normal maps tell you. So click on the folder icon here and just open your stairs normal.png. You should have this or wherever you have this, just navigate to that, that and just open it. And you'll see that our stairs get a bit of detail. It gets, the shadows get better on there and just, just light reflects better or how it's supposed to on the stairs. And ambient occlusion, that's called AO. That tells uh, where the shadows are for on the object itself. So, Click on this again and click AO and you see that the shadows get a bit more defined on the steps themselves. And the curvature, that tells the uh, tells us how the object, where the object is concave or convex, like how it's curving, kind of self-explanatory. So just add that. And this is not going to give a super noticeable difference like it did with normals and AO, but Later on, you will see why this is super important. And the material ID is just tells Mixer itself. Uh, just going to use stairs ID. And you see how material ID, uh, it's now bright green because that's the color I, I decided to use while I was making this model. So what this ID tells is uh, 
on uh, it tells mixer which part of the stairs you're painting on or the object you're painting on right so if i ha so for, in this case i only only have the steps themselves i don't have any other object but what if i had uh, railings and let's say some other stuff right uh, mixer wouldn't know what to paint on so these ids help mixer to differentiate between different objects so my stairs could be one id both my railings on the left and the right could be another id and so on so this is it for the setup Next, what we want is go into layers and add a, uh, here you'll see a bunch of options here to add different kinds of layers. You can add a surface layer. This is, this is mostly a predefined texture that uh, you can get from here. Uh, there's a lot of textures here uh, and even objects here. You can find even objects. So like you can add those as a surface layer or you can add decals. Decals are just so, consider them stickers on top of stuff and smart material i'll come to this at the very end this is super nice uh but i'm not going to explain this to you right now but at the very end i'll have an explanation of what those are because we will be creating a smart material uh solid layer uh this is just a plain color layer and this is what we will be mo using for the most part liquid layer uh gives liquids on on the texture itself or uh, noise layer adds noise to your uh, texture. So what noise is, is kind of like, if you have seen what TV static is, when your, uh, I'll have this up on the screen right now. And uh, that's, uh, it, it's kind of like TV static. It just sort of randomizes stuff, your texture. And paint layer, you can just paint your own stuff. You can just kind of like MS Paint. So let's just get started with add a solid layer. And now you'll see that our stairs have color. It's gray color, but I don't want to work with gray. I already have colors that I want to use on uh, predefined. So, and I'll be posting those uh, color hex codes in the comments. So in case you want to use the same colors that I'm using. So for that, uh, just click on Elbedo and I'm going to change this color. You can click on the circle to change the color. I'm going to click here, and click apply and you see that the color changes. And that will be our base layer. So I'm gonna call it base. And now we don't have to worry about this anymore. And just add another solid layer. And this is where we are gonna start adding details to our stairs. Uh, so this solid layer, I'll change the color of this layer to uh, color picker. This is the color I had, and I'm going to rename it to uh, Dark Gradient. You will see why I call it Gradient in a bit. So now you can just keep adding solid, la solid layers, and but that's not going to do a lot of work. It's just mostly going to keep adding on colors and colors without actually doing anything much. So what you really want to do is... Go at the very bottom, you'll see that there's more stuff here that you can add or delete even. Uh, so you wanna add a mask stack to the selected layer, or you can just right click on this dark gradient layer and add a mask stack here. So what this does, uh, a mask stack uh, kind of modifies your base layer. In this case, that's our dark brown color. So it modifies that in, uh, in a lot of ways, you'll see what I mean. Uh, it's easy to show what it does rather than trying to explain it. So here, there's two things you can add. You can add a component or you can add a modifier. So first we want to add a component here and I'm gonna add a position gradient. So to the gradient, uh, you'll see that there's a gradient now. It goes from white to dark uh, as it should and yeah, so that's pretty simple, right? But the thing is that I want this gradient, instead of going from bottom to top, I want it to go from top to bottom. That's just my choice. You can do it from uh, bottom to top if you want. I, I, I'm just gonna do it this way. So I'm gonna click invert and it's gonna invert the gradient. And yeah, uh, one thing I'm gonna change is change how far down the gradient goes. So I wanna change that to, let's say 0.2ish. Again, it comes down to a lot of what you want to do with it. You don't have to use point two, you can use whatever you want. 
I'm just going to use point two. Now we're just drinking water. Okay. Now I want to add another thing to it. So go to a mass component and let's add a texture map. So what texture map does is you can select a another texture and you can use that as sort of like a blueprint, I would say, or as an overlay to uh, do the, your ex existing mask. So if I, uh, what I want to work with is a library asset, uh, a pre-made pre texture. And I want to use imperfections because it's a it's stairs right everything has imperfections uh, on it so to just make it look a bit more detailed a bit more realistic even though we're going with a uh, stylized uh style <laughs> i i want to add imperfection imperfections to it so let's see i could just search here so the one i'm looking for is leakage and if i scroll down there should be the one that I you can, you'll see that there's a lot that I've already downloaded. That was because I was experimenting with them. But the one that I want is, uh, I think it was this one, right? Yeah, let's just go with this one, right? Uh, the thing is, I already have this downloaded. So uh, these are smart materials imperfections. So scroll down. For the first time, when you're trying to get the texture itself, you you will just want to uh, download it first and then uh, use it. So I found my leakage texture. I'm just going to click on it and it applies to it. All right. Okay. Next, we don't want to change anything here. What we want is add a modifier to this texture. Right now, it's it did apply the texture on it. And there's you, you see the leakage imperfections. If I hide this, you see how it just disappears. And I can just add a modifier and I want a pro projection modifier. And then change that to box projection. So what it's going to do is if you scroll in a lot, like zoom in a lot, it, you'll see it's styling the texture on the stairs again and again. So yeah. And for that, now, now the thing is that I don't want it to tile it. Uh, I want it to just big one big texture occupying, occupying the entire stair. So just change the scale to max of five. And yeah, that will be it for this. One thing I might change is the angle. So I might just change it to, let's say a 90 degrees. I'm just gonna change it to 90, it doesn't have to be perfect. And yeah, starting to see a bit of detail to, to this. And uh, that will be it for our, and then, Go here, add another solid layer, and rename it to red highlights, or just call it red high, because we want to add some some extra highlights to the stairs. And for this, the color that I will use is, hold on, let me just find the color. This color right here, copy paste it. And this is the color I'm going to use for the highlights. So uh and also change the type of the albedo layer from normal to overlay and we'll see how it changes here and once i do that i'm going to add another mask to it and to that mask i'm just going to add a sim simple normal uh component and in invert it now the thing is did i invert it here Yes, I did. Okay, good. Just making sure that everything is inverted so it doesn't mess up at any point. And also change the range. If you shift click and then you can drag the entire inter the two sliders or you can just click on one slider individually and drag it, drag them that way. So I'm just going to change the range on this a bit, make it a bit smaller. And if I hide and unhide, you can see that the details are starting to show up kind of sort of like you see those triangles sort of like pop up a bit more and that's what i will leave it at and uh, do i want to change anything else here i don't think so 
I think this, I, I like it the, I like the way it is right now. Now I would add another, now I want to add details to these edges of the staircase. So for that, I will add another solid layer, rename, call it blue edges, because that's the color I'll be using for the edges themselves. And just let me grab the color here. Change this to this blue. And change it to overlay again. And then add a mask to it. And the mask that I want is going to be a curvature map or curvature component. And default curvature, sure. The thing is that I want it to be, first of all, inverted. And the thing is, when I remove it and zoom in close to an edge, you see this edge? There's a bit of a blue color, bluish color over here. If I hide the layer, you see it just goes away. So that's what the curvature map was useful for. It was telling us where the cur the edges or the curves are and how it is curving, right? Uh, so go back to here. I'm going to change the levels a bit. I'm going to make it that much and really decrease the upper limit and change it to point this, I guess. So now you can see that it's not on the entire stairs it itself. It's just, it's just on the very edges of the staircase. Now, these edges are super... They look very artificial. They look kind of like someone used a Sharpie to draw those edges. So to give it a bit more of a natural look, I'm going to add a modifier and give it a blur. Use a Gaussian blur here. And then reduce the strength. 0 0.05, reduce the strength. Uh, do I want to change anything here? Uh, probably multiply it. Just give it a good normal, just keep it normal, I guess. And then uh, that's it for the edges. Now, if I hide and unhide, you can see it's giving a bit more detail, give it, giving it a sense of that there's a shadow there, sort of. And let's add another layer. And I'm gonna call it blue brush because I want this entire thing to have sort of like a, uh, brushed like brush strokes on the thing if you have played genshin or i think some other games do it they they add a texture that looks kind of like brush strokes so uh the blue that i'm going to use for this is add this to here this blue and change it to multiply this time and then add a mask and there's a few things that i want here on this mask First of all, I want a texture map. And the texture map I want of is a, uh, let's see, let's look up online. The thing that I want is rubble patch. I want this one. You see, you can see I already have it, have it downloaded. So you want to download that and just do that. Don't do that. <laughs> it's kind of nice to see how it adds details. Uh, but we don't want that. We wanted to add it to this. So you can just go to local library and add that and it adds it to this. And also change this AO to uh, opacity. And you can see now you have those, have, the, have just the shape of that texture map that we used on here. We don't have the texture itself. We just have the shape for it. And another thing that I want to add to this is make it really look like that there's a lot of strokes on here, right? So I'm going to add a modifier, add the scatter modifier, and you can see that it's adding, like scattering it, kind of self-explanatory. Self and the size range, I want, most, I want most of them to be really big. And want to give it a max range on the angle and the brightness so we get the maximum random, randomness. And also, uh, give since these look super hard, these again, we don't want the Sharpie look on here, right? So, go, gonna add a component 
and I'm gonna add burden noise. And now you'll see that it blurred out everything and that's because we have it set to normal. We wanna change it to distort. And with the distort, let's change the amplitude a little bit. Let's see, do frequency, I would say reduce it, increase it. You can experiment around, you can do whatever you want. I would say, I would, I'd go for a 4.4-ish. And these settings are not gonna do anything because we have octaves set to one. And we can maximize it, we can lower it. And once we do that, you can see this starts to change how, affect how the stairs look. I'm just gonna keep it to zero. And that will be it for this thing. And also change the intensity, I guess. You can really change the intensity or you can just leave it at zero. Uh, zero and not change it at all okay so that's it for the brush stroke and you might see that okay it doesn't look it looks uh doesn't look blue but it will look blue eventually just just trust the process so go back here, add a solid layer, and this time I'm gonna use, actually, I, I'm just, I just wanna duplicate this. I'm just gonna right click and duplicate layer. And instead of being blue brush, I'm gonna call it a uh, brown brush. And change the color of this brush here. Change the color to this brown. Right, and also one more thing that I want to do that I think missed is on this blue brush layer, change the opacity to like 0.3. And same thing for this layer, I'm gonna change the opacity to 0.3. But this time, for this layer itself, I'm gonna go and change the noise and just change it a little bit. Just make it a bit different than what we had. Uh, maybe play around with the amplitude, increase it a bit. Maybe reduce the frequency a little bit. And yeah, so it adds a bit of a variation to our brush strokes. Kind of makes it look a bit better in my opinion. Next up, what we want is add moss to this to the top of the staircase uh, because this again, kind of like. This th entire thing is mostly dirt or maybe the sort of like a sandstone look. Actually, not sandstone. Sand I've not seen sandstone get moss on it. So, but yeah, that's the kind of look I'm going for, like dirt thing with a uh, few, uh, like with grass on it. So for that, I'll just add another, not that, don't add that. Add a solid layer and I'll call it just moss. And the color for moss that I want to use here, it's kind of dark. Kind of a dark green here. Apply that, and uh, yeah. So nothing else that we want to change here. We do want to add a lot of things to our mask. So let's add a uh, mask stack and add a texture map here and make it a custom map library asset. Now there's one map which looks a lot like, uh, which one was it? I'm trying to remember. Uh, I think it was Silk Oak. Yeah, there we go. So just gonna do this. Okay. Don't download it. So you wanna just go here, download the asset. And then when you go here, uh, it should be in your recents. Uh, sort by latest, yes. Uh, I don't have a lot downloaded. Uh, Silk Oak. Do I not have it? Download it. I guess I will download the thing again and see if it shows up in my local library. It's not showing up. Okay. Why is it not showing up? View online. Silk. 
Oak. Just use that. Be online. So oak. Use that. Come on. Is it gonna download it again? Hmm. I want to add it to this thing. Why can I not add it to here? The thing is that texture worked really well for for the grass texture that I'm trying to go for. I find it. It's not there. Why is it not there? Just all types. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, don't be me. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, change and again, you want to change this to opacity. And once you change it to opacity, you will see that okay, there's grass, literal grass on the thing, but it looks very bad. It looks horrible. We don't want that. So, I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the brush strokes. I'm gonna add scatter. And hold on. Drinking a lot of water. Let's see, change the angle range to, let's say, just gonna play around with these settings again. Uh, this looks kind of nice. Do I want to play with this? I guess this, this looked fine. Maybe, yeah, this looked fine. Let's go with that. Now on top of the scatter, I'm going to add another modifier projection, change it to box projection, set the scale to max, and uh, I think that's it for the projection. Change the radius on it, completely remove it, and then add another layer. Uh, I think it will be normal, add a normal component, and invert it. And I want this to be multiply, I think. And come on, change this. Okay, that's not affecting it. Let's just change it to zero. Range, just keep it 0.5. Okay, okay. so in the moss, what I want is, I want to multiply it. Let's uh, change the tilt on it. So the thing is that I don't want the texture to be on these vaults of the steps. I want it to be just on the top of them, right? So I can change, I can play around with the angle and just put it at a perfect negative 90 or it doesn't have to be perfect. Change the range a bit, reduce it. And you can see it's kind of starting to show up, right? And, but it still looks very artificial. Like you can see the, the strokes themselves. You don't want that. So I'm gonna add a blur modifier again to this. Make it a Gaussian blur and reduce this, probably increase it a little bit. Uh, that looks fine. And then add a brightness and contrast uh, modifier to it and reduce the brightness ever so slightly and do the same thing with contrast, right? Okay. It's very faint. It's not super noticeable, but you don't have to worry about that. Uh, we'll fix it. What you want now is Take the same thing, actually. Take this, and uh, where did it go? Range, no, invert. Yes, we wanna invert it. Don't forget to invert your textures. Always remember to invert it if you're working in an inverted thing, right? So that's why it was <laughs> looking like that. You wanna go back in here and change the texture map to invert. Now. 
I want to add a bit more detail, a bit more depth to the moss texture. So what I'm going to do for that is just going to duplicate this layer. Uh, rename it to moss high. Change it to moss high. And for the highlights, I kind of want to make these colors pop a, a bit more. So change that and there's something here that I want to do as well. Change this to add, right? And modify a few settings in the mask component. So here it can be, why is it not scrolling? Come on, scroll, please, please, thanks. Okay. So here I can play around with this a bit more, change this a bit, maybe reduce this a little bit, change the seed if you want, gonna change this, and then it, with the brightness, reduce it a tiny bit, and then can change this a little bit if you want, but I'm not going to change it. I'm going to keep it this way. And last thing that I want is this it to add? Do I want this to add? Yes, I do want it to add. So on the moss texture, go here and change it to add and don't keep it normal. Change You want it to change to add. And you can see, don't, ig don't ig ignore this thing. Ignore the sides. Ignore both the sides, but we're just focusing on the steps themselves. You can see it's starting to take, take a bit of shape, right? Okay. Now the last thing that's remaining is to give detail, give more details to our these edges where my mouse cursor is. These edges don't have any details on them right now, so let's do that. So I'm just gonna actually. Do I want to reduce this opacity? Yeah, let's reduce the opacity a little bit on both the things. Maybe just, okay. So let's add another solid layer, call it edges. And for the edges, I'm gonna go with a bit lighter color than what we had for our base because it's kind of, I'm trying to give it a bit of shine to it. And this is the color that I had and going to leave it at that. We don't have to change anything here, but going to add a mask to it. And in the mask, uh, going to add curvature and levels should be these, these levels are fine. Might want to add a bit more. This looks fine, right? Yeah. I, I'll leave the fine, fine tuning to uh, you if you want to change it uh, in some other way, but th this is gonna be it for the edges. And the next thing that uh, I can do is I'm just gonna duplicate this layer and call it edges high, just highlights of the edges themselves. And Go back to the edges layer and change the opacity on it a bit. Change the opacity to this much. Same thing for this. Change the opacity to something similar to what we had before, except we might want it to be a bit higher. And then go here. And then do the curvature. We can leave the curvature as it was, but I'm gonna add a modifier to it and add a Gaussian blur. And just change the strength on it a bit more. Okay. And I'm just gonna make it affect this edges. So it's not so that it so that it's only affecting the edges themselves and not the entire material. So I'm just gonna do this. Alt click 
just a reminder that you can do this with alt left click on anything you can just do that with anything you want right okay so this is gonna be it for the texture painting on the stairs now once we are done with the texture what i want to do is you save us some trouble if you want to texture something similarly but some other thing let's say a rock or the ground itself or maybe some other form of stairs we don't want to do the entire thing again right that's a lot of work that's going to take a lot of time so what you want to do is just select the entire thing uh, and add group and i'm going to call it rename uh let's see gdc moss great name i'm going to call it gdc moss and you can export right click on that and export as smart material and just export it it's going to give you this fancy ball kind of thing now what it did uh, is that it exported all of our parameters as a smart material and you can just go ahead uh get another model with all your with all your normal maps ao maps or and curvatures and just add that material do that thing and it will apply all the things very similarly uh, you might want to change something individually once you apply it but it's going to save you a lot of time so you don't have to apply all these layers again and in case you don't want to save the material i mean it's a good practice to save it but in case you don't want to and you want to use this uh stairs in your game or your other project or whatever you're working on go here file you can do quick export but what i like to do instead is go here on the right side click on export and i can just set an asset name i can set uh if i want the fpx or obj uh, and then what texture preset i'm using i'm, I'm going to go with specular map uh this doesn't make a huge difference in our case you don't have to worry about that but just click export and make sure the resolution is still 4k you can dumb it down to something much lower but i'm going to keep it at 4k and once you export it it will do some processing and export the uh, texture and the model itself and yeah it will give a bunch of different files so if i go to something uh Let's see where did export it. I think it was here. No. I'm just gonna export it. Exporting stairs. Okay. Now I wanna check mark open folder after after export. So that it opens the folder where it exported it to. And this is where it exported it, right? You see, you have your uh, EXR. Did I tell it to export the EXR? Huh. That is not what I wanted. Oh, export model. Yeah, forgot to export the model itself. Yeah, then now now we export it. So you see, you have the FBX. You can open this up in Blender if you want. You have the AO maps, you have the, all the maps that you used before. The specular and the gloss, they're not going to have anything because we didn't work with those layers. And then all the paint layers that we used, they're all going to be in the diffuse layer. So you see, we have the entire texture in here saved. Uh, so yeah. So that is it for the texture painting tutorial. There's a lot of things that uh, I didn't cover here, like what each individual thing means. I would suggest that you read the documentation online because this is a lot of stuff to cover. And I didn't cover how to make this model and prepare it to be texture painted. That, that is something uh, that is an entirely different topic and uh, something not as easy to do as you might think. So again, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.